Team Shots swimmer Simon Hootinger set off with the intentions of extending the team's lead. As hundreds of athletes continued to transition from the run leg to the swim, some were utilising some interesting equipment for the long ocean haul. Six minutes behind the lead female was Louise Marks from Team New Zealand. But the Kiwis are not used to swimming in their adventure races and Marks struggled at the transition. I don't do this very often. <laughs> would the swim cost her the race or could she peg back the Aussie? Only time would tell. eyes were on the first athlete to emerge from the surf and it was little surprise to see that Australia's Jared Kohler surfaced first, maintaining his overall individual lead. The 1.9 kilometre ocean swim was a gruelling affair, but just to make matters worse, the athletes had close to a one kilometre run to the kayak transition. Team shot swimmer Simon Hootinger, the super fish putting in a superhuman effort as the teams weren't expected to catch the individuals who had a 15 minute race advantage until the mountain bike section. Grant Suckling wasn't about to let his series lead go without a fight and was only minutes behind the individual race leader, helped on by Belinga Pasco, who was having a superb race. Then there was drama for the man at the front. Tired and confused, the race leader went the wrong way in the paddle. Back on course, the Australian lost valuable minutes off his lead. The big man in Australian paddling, Rhys Baker from Team Shots, now had the race leader in his sights and set off in hot pursuit. But in true New Zealand spirit, Kiwi Dougal Allen wasn't about to hand the Trans-Tasman Trophy to the Aussies without a fight and was only minutes behind. Suckling and Pasco were still neck and neck and the next to hit the kayaks. The Team Australia member walking on water in his transition. Meantime, Reese from Team Shots overtakes Jared for the overall race lead, although Jared is still the individual race leader. Buoyed by the confusion with the Australian leaders, Dougal made his way into the paddle leg, closely followed by fellow Kiwi Gavin Mason. Then in a huge shock, lead female Deanna Blegg smashed the swim leg in 33 minutes and 45 seconds. Others were less organised. Why'd you put it down this way? while Deanna had issues at the start of the paddle whilst attempting to eat a banana. This piece of fruit giving her the slip. Out in the ocean, team shots were extending their lead with Reese Baker storming away from individual leader Jared Kohler. The Augusta Anaconda Adventure Race is a real family affair and it's not just mum and dad who come along for the adventure. Almost 700 kids lined up for the Anaconda Junior Survivor. We like to give adventures for uh, kids of all shapes and sizes. 600 kids tackling a four kilometre obstacle course. They go through the water, they climb through spiders' webs, they go down slippery slides, and uh, yes, yeah, proven pretty popular. The Surfrider Foundation is a group of Indigenous students from the Kimberley who have been touring the area, learning how to surf and care for the environment. One of our Surf Rider Directors uh, was a part of it last year and um, just thought it was a good opportunity because he was coming down to the Night River anyway for them to join in the race. Everyone's a winner in the Junior Survivor, uh, whether you're first or last, as long as you come with a bit of dirt on your knees and a, you know, a smile on your face, uh, you're a winner as, we're, as far as we're concerned. Are you guys excited? We're approaching the halfway point in the Anaconda Adventure Race, but with a 32km mountain bike leg and a 2.5km run still to come, nutrition and hydration are key. There's nothing worse than running out of water mid-adventure. And a water bottle is clumsy to carry, fill up and is quite simply outdated. 
The Hydration Backpack has revolutionized the way we now carry water and essentials. It allows you to carry up to two liters of water inside a tough medical grade bladder. Hydration Backpacks will prolong your next adventure. at the Augusta Anaconda Adventure Race and with two of the four legs completed, leaders' team shots run into a major problem with Reese Baker going almost half a kilometre the wrong way. It affected the overall race time but not the lead as the shots team completed the kayak leg in 58 minutes and 30 seconds. The pressure was now back on the shots team but there was still plenty of praise from John Gregg who was about to embark on his 32 kilometre mountain bike leg. Good work. Then in a huge surprise, the shot's B-team paddler, Dean Beeman, jumped on the mistake by Reese Baker in the paddle to put down the fastest kayak time of an incredible 57 minutes and 19 seconds to put the heat on the leading team. Whilst hundreds of competitors were just starting their paddle leg, the race was on at the head of the individual category as the two Aussies were neck and neck completing the kayak stage. Beamond had given his all and was exhausted. Young gun Rowan Brown had the unenviable task of catching the four-time state mountain bike champion. Holler and Suckling left the penultimate transition practically together as the race was on for the individual title. Then lead Kiwi Dougal Allen appeared just seven minutes behind the lead Australian pair of Kohler and Suckling. Out at the front of the race, John Gregg wasn't having it all his own way, as the steep sandy climb was proving trickier than expected. Lead female Deanna Blegg continued her fine race, finishing the kayak leg in one hour, 20 minutes and 20 seconds to extend her overall race lead. The steep sandy climb also proving difficult for the young gun from the Shots B team. And it was this same section of the race where Jared Kohler put the pedal down and left Australian teammate Grant Suckling as the lead pair was split for the first time since the end of the kayak leg. Suckling overcome by the climb and forced to push his bike up the hill as Kohler moved further into the lead. Louise Mark pegged back some time with an impressive paddle, but as with her teammates, she would need the ride of her life to catch Deanna Blegg. The former Iron Woman was well into her mountain bike leg with the scent of individual victory in her nostrils. Brown from the Hot Shots B team was making ground on the overall leader, but time and kilometres were running out. The Trans-Tasman clash was in full swing as the three athletes from both teams battled fatigue, exhaustion and each other in their quest for the cup. With an average speed of over 35 kilometres per hour, John Gregg completed the 32 kilometre mountain bike stage in a staggering one hour, seven minutes and 25 seconds, which not surprisingly was the fastest by any athlete. The team regrouped for the final leg, a two and a half kilometre beach run to the finish line. Just over five minutes behind, the Shots B team commenced their final leg. Suckling had pegged back several minutes in the mountain bike section over individual leader Jared Kohler, who hit the final run with a slender lead and he knew it as he somehow summoned on all his reserves to up the pace in the final sprint. Team Shots wrapped up the team's event and the overall victory in a staggering time of 3 hours, 48 minutes and 30 seconds. The winning team were understandably ecstatic. An opportunity like this where we all come together is always good fun as well. It's a good social atmosphere afterwards and during the race and um, there's a great sense of community so we all sort of come here with, uh, with aspirations to do well and enjoy the whole weekend. Suckling was hurting after his tremendous effort on the bike and looked a spent force. 
The Hot Shots B team came in second, just over seven minutes behind the winners. After one hour and eight minutes in the saddle, Dougal Allen was the first Kiwi to hit the final run home. But there was no stopping Jared Kohler, taking out the individual glory and wrapping up the victory in four hours, 17 minutes and 28 seconds. It's been a pretty big goal of mine to, to do well at this Anaconda race of the series. So, yeah, overall, I'm actually really, 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 really happy. Grant Suckling overcame severe stomach cramps to secure second, just over five minutes behind the winner. An exhausted yet gallant Dougal Allen was the first Kiwi home, 12 minutes behind the winner. Compatriot Gavin Mason was a further 10 minutes behind his teammate. Others were ecstatic just to finish the 62.9 kilometre course. On her return to competition, Deanna Blegg wrapped up the women's individual victory in a cracking time of 4 hours, 57 minutes and 37 seconds. I didn't know whether I'd come back again, but I just started training again with my sister and then felt the felt my body change again and felt the drive come back and I thought, no, I'll give it another go. Kiwi Louise Marks bounced back from her disappointing swim to come home as the second female individual just over 12 minutes behind the winner. No surprise then that Australia reclaimed the Trans-Tasman Cup in emphatic style. As hundreds of competitors battled on to complete the gruelling anaconda race in Augusta, the pain and heartache was paid off by the feeling of completion in the largest adventure race in the world. That completes the adventure for this show. We'll see you next time on Anaconda Multisport TV.